because I'm going to light up the stage. Good job. Oh my gosh. And lights a chump <laughs> like a vandal. See? I'm telling you, it's just coming out, Tina. The talent just oozes sometimes. So, my name is Chris Cook, guys. Welcome. Appreciate everybody being here and on time today. Um, I live here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I am Direct Symmetry Financial Group, have been for seven years. Very proud to be so. Man, I love getting on here and bragging about you fine folks each and every week. So we're going to start out with some numbers here. Everybody see our fancy PowerPoint we put together? <laughs> Sorry, we've not yet mastered the art of like delayed gratification and putting it up there. But I am going to call out everybody's name that did 3,000 or more this past week. So be prepared to hear your name called if you did that. Greg Fairclough, way to go, buddy, 3,305. Mr. Valzarn, 3,961. Phil Mooring, 4,745. Jeff Miller, 6,766. Jordan Gillum, 6,991. Rocco Pearson, 7,260. Paul Sharp, 7,744. Didn't quite make the cut to get in the top five, Paul, but you came close, buddy. Here's the top five, though. Check out these insane numbers. Laura Davis. Way to go, Laura Davis. 8,780. Way to go, lady. The Princess Warrior strikes again. I'm telling you, the Princess Warrior. Way to go, Laura. Proud of you, lady. Number four, Brian Howe. 10,446. That dude is a stud muffin. Mr. DJ Robinson. Also another stud muffin. 13,328. Way to go, buddy. Number two, Mr. Elijah Carujo, going to be a guest on the call today. You want to hear from him, folks, 13,929. And check this out, Carolina Morales or Keller, Carolina Ramos, 22,305. Where, where to go, Carolina? I think she's like over, I don't know, like 80,000 or something like that in her first like six weeks in production. Um, pretty insane. Joe, you could probably share some of those stats if you want to put that out there on band, what she's done since she's been here. It's pretty impressive. You guys want to know. Boom. We're going to do top app counts for this past week. I'm going to celebrate the other people that did over five or more. I still love recognizing that. Jordan Gillum had five applications this past week. We had Jeff Miller, seven applications. We had Carolina with eight applications. And of course, you see everybody on here, Brian Howell, nine applications, Laura Davis, 10, the top two, DJ Robinson, Elijah Crujo. Way to go, guys. That's good stuff. That's good examples right there. We're going to now recognize people out there doing interviews each and every week. Why would you do interviews? Why would you? Because you want to build a future for yourself and your family, but also you want to open this opportunity, the wealth of opportunity of Symmetry Financial up to other people because I know it's impacted my life. Pretty sure, Elijah, it's impacted yours and it's just impacted a lot of people in a positive way. So here's the people that shared it more than 10 times this past week. Uh, Brian Hamby, Michael Gray, Barry Davis, Jared Gillum, Mark Duke Bauer. Way to go, everybody on that leaderboard. That's good stuff right there. Top recruiters this past Ooh. week. It means if you go out there and, and you interview people, you tend to hire people. We got Brian Hamby, James Martinez, Dustin Hensley, Troy Stevens, Eric Rush, Andy, Anjay. I call you Andy. Jordan calls you Anjay. I don't know. I think they're both awesome. Way to go, Andy. Um, Mark Neubauer with two this past week. Brian Howe with three. Barry Davis with three. Way to go, uh, Brian Howe and Barry Davis. Mr. Elijah Crujo, is that right? Is this an error? Tina, did you mess up? I did not. This guy then went out and started recruiting. I like that. Good job, Elijah. I like that, buddy. That's key, man. Way to go, Elijah Crujo and that organization, man. Five new recruits this past week. Agents that wrote their first application this past week, Daniel Kitterling. I think I nailed that name. I'm going to pretend like I did. Act with confidence. Also, uh, 1,471, Daniel, in your first week. Way to go, Daniel Kitterling. Part of the Jeff Miller organization. It's like Jeff Miller has a new writer every week, I believe, Tina. So that guy's always got some good people coming out. Going to celebrate all the agencies and, and key leaders that did above 15000 this past week. Tina's Base Shop. Woohoo, Tina. Way to go, lady. 20077 uh, The Gillum Agency, 22021 
the Miller Agency, or key leader group, soon to be agency, 23,014. Martinez Key Leader Group, soon to be agency, 23,506. The Elijah Carujo Agency, 26,419. That young man not only went out and led his team, his team also went off and they did some serious recruiting. Elijah, that's pretty good stuff. Maybe no secret why we have you as a guest on the call today, right, buddy? <laughs> so way to go, my man. That is awesome. The Newbauer Agency, 46,521. Mark, you, sir, are impressive, buddy. Happy for you and that organization. 46,000 in a week. That's not too shabby at all. Pretty good when an agency owner does 46,000 in a week when the whole month uh, puts you at agency owner. So good stuff there, man. All right, top agencies in building. We got the Miller Key Leader Group with three this past week, the Gillum Agency with four, Carujo Agency, and the Newbauer Agency tied at five apiece. Way to go, teams, right there. This is key. This is key. So if you're out there and you're building an organization and you're not on this board each and every week, it's going to be hard for you to really build a good, consistent, growing business. We're not saying that because we're mad at you. We're just saying that out of love because we realize, hey, you just got to recognize in your business what's not going in the right direction. You got to be on this each and every week. If you are, I promise you, your business is going to go north. You're going to find people that go out and do this business with you. Awesome job, everybody on this leaderboard. Awesome, awesome job. Everybody out there, that's, that's outstanding, outstanding work. So, Tina. You can get on me now. Did I leave out anybody's names? I don't think so. All right. I like it. Well, I like it, Tina. I'm going to stop my screen share now. Bam. We'll come back to this normal view because I like this better. You got some uh, Tina's news and notes for us today, buddy? I do have some news and notes. So the first thing I want to talk about is if an agent purchases leads in a new state or gets a license in a new state, I need to know about it. So shoot me an email, give me a call and let me know um, because we need to check and see if, if everybody needs a license to receive overrides. Any of those things are important. So I need to know if somebody purchases leads in a new state. Key thing though, who do you, you don't need to know it from everybody, Tina. Who do you need the to know? The agency it from? owner. Right, because you're going to get 4 million calls if we say it that way. We don't want 4 million calls. We want our agency owners calling us. So let your upline and agency owner know. <laughs> boom. And then they call you and let you know, right? Yes. Yes. And so, because that's key. And then agency owners, make sure you're teaching your teams to call you, let you know if they're getting a license in a new state. Uh, you guys, as you grow bigger, you're going to realize how important that actually is. So don't miss out on that. Make sure that doesn't get lost in translation. Anything else you want to cover, Miss Tina? I also want to remind everyone to check pending daily. Um, call your carriers early in the morning. That way you can get your business um, approved that day if it's something simple that they need from you. Also, if a client calls you with questions, you need to call them back that day or just as soon as you can because they're going to get upset and then call the carrier and then the carrier is going to get upset. So we just need to make sure that you're doing your due diligence of getting back to your clients as they need you. Yep. Absolutely. And I'll say this for all of you out there searching for profitability in this business, me and Tina and Tina, you correct me if I'm wrong. Tina, you've worked in my office for six plus years, right? Yes. Have we ever seen an agent bad at pending that's profitable? No. no. We haven't. So I just want you to know a key to profitability is you uh, being Johnny on the spot with your pending with your your uh, clients because they will respect it that you're doing it number one you'll get your clients covered quicker which is certainly a huge part of our job and how we serve families and then the last thing on that it gets you paid like you don't want to get paid <laughs> like Come on now. This is not a non-profit organization. It's a for-profit organization. It'll also, um, it'll build relationships with you and the carrier as well. I mean, even though you seem like you're bothering them, but it's going to build a relationship there and that's only going to help you. Yeah. And it's not going to seem like you bother them because they want you in contact <laughs> with them. 
you're going to develop relationships with underwriters that will help you on your business if you yep. do that more and more often. So, guys, just make sure you pay attention to that. We say that out of love because I promise you that's something that I knew when I was a personal producer in the field helped me so much because I was creating relationships with the carriers and it created a good relationship with the clients, which helped everything, helped business stay on the books, helped us be profitable, helped us build a business here. So good stuff. Anything else, Miss Tina? I think that's all for today. Well, I appreciate you and thank you. Uh, boom, boom, boom. All right, we got contest standings to announce, Tina. So you yell at me if I mess up any of these. And you're probably like, well, I don't even know what they are, but hey. Here we go. We got contest standings. So I want to give, this is the free room that we're giving away at conference, free room. Anybody can qualify for this. Anybody except our key leaders and agency owners, they can't qualify. We wanted everybody to have a shot at this. This is like a $400, $500 a night room value that you guys can go get. It's going to give you three nights stay there at the uh, Lowe's Portofino Hotel in Orlando, Florida and for the conference September 8th and 9th. Here's the people that are leading. Anybody can win this contest. I promise you can move up this thing really quick. We got Rochelle Singleton with three, Michael Grape with three. We got Brian Hamby with five. We got Brian Howe with nine, stretching out his lead a little bit there. So currently, uh, Brian Howe is leading in that right there, but we got a slew of people that I'm hearing, Tina, have a lot more people to get registered right there. So how they say they're coming. We'll see, buddy. So, uh, so good job, Brian. How, buddy? Way to go, man. You're leading right now. So we'll see. Hang on that spot. The sweet, sweet contest, which is everybody. This does include our agency owners and key leaders. However, Jeremy Hopgood, it includes you. Anjay, it includes you and Dawn, buddy. It includes everybody. Tina, it even includes you if you want to do it. But I'm already paying for your hotel room down there. So you don't get it. So <laughs> you can just help us do it for somebody else, right? Sweet, sweet contest. And I promise you, Jordan, was it pretty sweet for you and Jared last time y'all stayed in that? Tell us how sweet this sweet is. I mean, it's it's like so nice that you're like, wait, why are there two kitchens in here? Like it's it's ridiculous. Like, you, you walk around a corner and you're like, there's more. And right. then there's another bathroom. Like even people who came by the suite would be like, oh, okay, so you have this bathroom over here. And then you walked around, they're like, there's more. There's just constantly more to that room. Awesome. How many people were you in your suite for your little party you had? Well, I think that the 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 fire count was like supposed to be like 10 or something, but we may have had like 35. Ah, maybe had like 35 people in there. At least they didn't call the fire department on us because we survived right. that one. But uh, I promise you, it'll hold a lot of people. And it is a beautiful suite. If you put up a goal in there, I think we could play some basketball. I don't know. I'm voting what? for Grafe. I'm voting for Grafe to win that, that free room. Oh, we have one Grafe. vote in for Grafe. Votes for Grafe for the free room. Let's go. Oh, Grafe. Grafe for the free room. Let's see what you got, Grafe. She's calling you out, buddy. Grafe, you got three. Rochelle Singleton at three, too. Hamby, my money's on you, buddy. I'm going to run. Let's see Brian, if you can track down how. Nobody has money on Brian. <laughs> no. No. We're going to have to let Jeffrey Hello, Miller and Joe Martinez. Brian, you got my vote, Tina, buddy. Tina's got money on how. You know, he's trying to probably unmute himself right now, and he can't, and I love that. So he likes the, the San Francisco Giants, so he's muted. So it's good. It's good. I'm a Dodger fan, so only baseball fanatics would understand our, our love-hate relationship there. So the sweet, sweet contest, we got Elijah Carujo, 13. Elijah, you got five new people this week. I'm thinking that number's going to go up. We got Val Zarn at 20. We got Gillum at 24. Mark Neubauer at 26, and Smoking Joe Martinez, which is hiring everybody and doing an awesome job right now. Way to go, Smoking Joe Martinez. 38 mm. in sweet contest right now. And I ain't going to talk junk for him, but I am going to say that he's saying nobody's going to catch him. Nobody. <laughs> it's not even going to be close when it's over with. So, so it's going. he's going to put up a big number. So, anyway. He may or may not have said that, but I may be translating it for him. So anyway, so good stuff there. Way to go, Joe. It's good stuff, buddy. Hey, 
my wife wanted to let you guys know because we did get some more rooms. We are down to 10 rooms now, even with the extra rooms, 10 rooms left in the room block. So if you're looking to book a room, get a room today. Go ahead and book Wednesday and Thursday. So you got room secured uh, for you and your family, guys. I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. Go ahead and get those rooms out there. Uh, 10 rooms left, and they are going quick. We're sharing that with the uh, young organization as well. So make sure you guys get that. It's contest standings. Boom. Jordan, you pointing at me, you waving at me. Did no, I do I'm, I'm about to kick Brian Howell out of my house if he's not rooting for the Gillums. Let's go. Oh, that's right. No, he's, I forgot he's in there. He's in studio. So he can yeah. unmute himself by come talking to you. And I don't want to do that. That'd be like cheap. He can cheap. get out. He can get out. Um, all right, buddy. So you got 30 seconds. Do what you're going to do, Jordan. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm so lucky. Uh, you know, uh, we get asked every single month, like, hey, you get this week, you get the, the book of the month. And I was like, oh, man you know who I would love for you guys to hear from is someone who's going through a really awesome season in their life. You know, uh, the book of the month does talk about, you know, going through that transition period of being where you are to where you want to be. And uh, I, we're just, we're really lucky to have somebody on our team who has pushed through as many failures as I've seen them go through, uh, you know, cause we all found out the hard way, you know, at least you should be that to get to success, you got to fail your way there. And so I'm super pumped uh, coming out of Atlanta, Georgia, uh, standing at about 6'3", and is now our center and point guard and wing on our basketball team. That's right. That's right. Uh, you guys get to hear the book of the month, um, our War of Art, Stephen Pressfield uh, with Jeremy Hopgood. Lay it on and keep it keep it nice and short and sweet, and uh, we'll get on with the rest of the call. I appreciate you, man. Five minutes, Hopgood. That's what you got, basketball player. Let's see what you got, buddy. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for letting me do this. Um, so the book of the month, uh, War of Art. Um, I actually had a hard time figuring out what I wanted to talk about because the book is so good. I read this book like three times. That's how good it is. I love it, buddy. Um, so I chose four, uh, chapter four. So pretty much what, that, what I gathered from is just the editing, um, you know, that you're doing with yourself every single day. I think it's important to understand um, that when you're going through your life you know you can't you can't or not you can't speculate but speculating is very complicated made things hard right because you have an idea of how something's going to go and there's just how it's going to go uh, I think it's important just to stay on track with getting through it and just hoping for the best keep moving forward um, and I love this in, in relation to uh, basketball as well um, you know, when I'm playing basketball, I do not think about going towards the goal because it absolutely stresses me out. I have to think about the person that's in front of me. So, you know, I got to watch for their hands. I got to do the keep away, all that good stuff. And then once I get past that person, who's else in front of me? <laughs> so um, in relation to symmetry with this, I think it's really awesome because, um, you know, I've been stuck. You know, I've been stuck in places and I had to keep running that situation back. I'm like, okay, I tried this. That didn't work. And, and, you know, when it comes to basketball as well, you got to be okay with getting the ball stolen. You got to be okay with losing it. You know, we got to keep dribbling, mostly the, the biggest part. Um, so a few things that, uh, or, or two, two things that I have that, that I think about with symmetry or just in general as, um, You know, in your in your everyday life, I think you should recognize your opponent. Um, so in relative to basketball, I mean, uh, it doesn't matter who you are. I don't care if you're seven foot. I don't care if you're 230 pounds. It doesn't matter. We're going to battle. Uh, so show me my opponent. It's like what I like to say to myself. Show me my opponent. And in this case, for the book of the month, uh, your opponent is procrastination. Uh, it's anxiety. It's 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 you understanding truly what you're dealing with, dealing with yourself. Just, you know, cause it just give you an idea of how to go about it and, and how to handle whatever you're dealing with. Um, and I also have this thing that I tell myself too, you know, so for last week I had, I think I had a pretty good week. So I'm gonna run that back. And, you know, hopefully, uh, I wouldn't say hopefully, but you know, I know things are gonna get better. So uh, I'm gonna run that back this week. 
you know, make sure it's pretty solid and concrete and uh, edit and see what I can do better. So that is all I have for the book of the month. I hope that helps some, some people here. Just, just get through it. Just, you know, keep moving forward. That's really all you got. And don't be afraid to uh, get beat up a little bit. Just get right back up. Keep pushing. Yeah. And, you know, and I love that, man. I was sitting here taking notes. Uh, hop good. I was taking some good notes on here. So recognize your opponent. That That's key, man. I hope everybody got that. Recognize your opponent. And for those of you out there that may be wondering, it's like, well, who who is my opponent? You know, and, and I love what he had said. So I, I wrote a couple of notes on that. Here's what I want you to do. There's an exercise you can do. You can do it right now. You can do it right after the call. Um, go over to your bathroom or, or wherever you're at and, and look in the mirror. And look in the mirror. And what you see in the mirror is your opponent. It's you. It, it always has been. It, it always will be. It's you. You have to look at that. You also have to face that fact. There's an old Japanese proverb. Uh, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. And I'm telling you guys, like, the things that I've learned over years of doing this business is, like, a lot, all of the setbacks that I had in personal production, it started out with me procrastinating. It started out with me not just doing the mundane, not doing the daily tasks that simply this, this business has no negotiations. Like success, uh, Jeremy, that I've learned in this business, there is no negotiation for success. You can't negotiate success. If you want it, it doesn't allow you to bargain with it. It means you just have to do basic principles in order to gain it and ascertain it. It doesn't let you bargain with it. And so this, this business has that and it can show us that. And a lot of our war is in our mind. Well, most of our war is in our mind. I can't really think of anything physically here because you know me and you don't even have to dunk a basketball to be able to help somebody with a policy, right? Right. You know what I mean? So the war is always in our mind. And I just, you know, I, I hope that y'all recognize that, you know, it's recognition of that first that, that solves half the problem. Um, but I would ask you guys to really look at that is, is look at yourself in the mirror, realize that's the only thing, that's the only thing that can hold you back. It's the only thing that can hold you back. And I, and I love the war of art really for us, it's war of the mind, right? So War of the Mind, beautiful job, beautiful job, Jeremy. I love that, buddy. And I, and I challenge everybody to understand that there's a platform that Symmetry has provided that if you are willing to get outside of you and get out of your own, not let yourself get in your own way, that this platform will let you play and play at any level that you want to play at, right? And um, so anyway, just a good challenge there. So, hop good. Good job, buddy. Hey, you got to come up, man, play some basketball with me. I play on Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday, 6 a.m. in the morning. You got to get up early. Get up well, I early. figured we were going to play a conference. Oh, we're going to play That's a conference. Good. I like it. I've set up a day, man. Find a basket. Hey, I don't know if you know. Jordan's pretty good, though. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah I can't wait. Um, yep, we're going to play. <laughs> yep, yep. So, I have a three-point shooting contest to invite you all to it. So, it's going to be awesome, buddy. So, all right, my man. Appreciate you, buddy. Thank Elijah, you. you out there, man? Yes, sir. Can y'all hear me okay? Man, I can hear you good. Where's my Africat, man? We missed the all-star of the show. He was getting obnoxious and needy. He like, he, he. Oh, he that dude back up. here, man. I like Maverick. <laughs> For those that don't know, who is Maverick? Who is Maverick, Elijah? Tell us who Maverick is. Maverick is, uh, he's my dog. Um, we're dog sitting today. Uh, my mother-in-law's puppy, and so it's a little bit loud at the at the Carujo household. But um, he's my dog. He's the size of a horse. You can ride him. I've tried. I checked. Um, he's a he's an Anatolian Shepherd, Great Pyrenees. If you don't know what kind of dog that is, yeah, he looks like the dog from Sandlot. That's what he looks yeah. like. Um, he's not a bull mastiff, but he looks just like one. So yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah he's a beautiful dog, man. Beautiful yeah. dog. I'm a dog lover. I, I ran appointments a bunch of years and I petted every little dog and cat and 
gerbil or monkey or raccoon or yes there was a <laughs> raccoon on one of my appointments dude was his raccoon was nibbling on his ear and um that's disgusting hey that wasn't disgusting dude it was awesome and i wrote a policy on him it was awesome <laughs> as long as you closed it that's what matters <laughs> yeah well speaking of animals uh my little mascot that i've had for 16 years uh we had to put him down last night biscuit yeah oh, so goodness. we lost biscuit last night so if you out there say a prayer for my wife and me and my little kids because we've had him for 16 years elijah every wow. appointment it, that dude, he must have read a positive book when he was a little young pup or something, because every time when I came home from an appointment, he was there and his little his little tail was wagging. He'd do a circle around me, like celebrating it, right? You know what I mean? So yeah, we lost Biscuit. Damn. It was tough. We all go through stuff in life, I know. So don't worry about it. We're gonna be fine. But um, it's just, you know, you you having your dog there with you, man. Love your animals. I love animals. Animals are good. Damn. Good stuff, yeah, man. they're family, so, uh, dude. Seriously. Yeah, he's he's like uh he was he's been my mascot for like 16 years, man. He slept yeah. in our bed. So last night was the first time in 16 years we've not had him in bed with us. So it was yeah, it is man, like I'm not to bring sadness to it. Hey, we all gonna go that way one day, right? You know what I mean? I'm just overjoyed we had 16 long years with him because how blessed is that? Because we all have dogs and a lot of them you lose them way quicker than that. So my prayer mm -hmm. is we got Maverick around for a long time, buddy. Right? So, That's your fur baby. He has, he has to live forever because I don't want to picture life without him, you know? That's right, man. It's your fur baby right now, right? So that's good stuff, buddy. So, all right, my man. Now, we're going to have you on here. We're going to talk about some great stuff. Um, let me see. I want to get to this because I, I, me and you shared a couple of texts last night, and I want to make sure I set you up right, buddy. Yeah. So I know you wrote just your group, man, did over 26,000 this week. You had five recruits this past week. You did personally 13,929 and 11 applications while leading your team, plus five new recruits, man, on fire and in Fuego week. Um, just give us, lay us down some principles for those people out there that like, man, they're wanting to get better at personal production because they yeah. know that fuels their current income. So first, I want you to give us two, three keys on okay. how to have a big week and um, how to have a big yeah. week, buddy. That sounds good. I think it'd be cool if we toss this back and forth too, because what a lot of people toss don't realize, around, Chris, you were a producer for what, over 10 years? 10 years yep. straight. Yep. He's got more field experience than most of us combined. So <laughs> he knows his stuff. Um, what I want you guys to write down if, for quick show of hands for the people who have their camera on, uh, who's new your first 90 days? I like it. All right. I want you to write something down. Um, the reason you write it down is if you don't, by Wednesday, you're going to not remember more than two words from this conversation. So um, I want you to write down the word process and then a little greater than sign and then results. Process is greater than results. Um, last week, I focused solely on the process. Um, and I'll give you guys a couple practical tips, but I went into last week uh, with a big need. I needed to make some money. Uh, with, I mean, that's the long and short of it. And what I what I normally do is I'll set an APV goal. I want to write seven grand. I want to write 10 grand, whatever. I didn't want to cap myself. And so what I did was uh, I committed and Paul and I, we had a huddle up with, with you, Chris, and we just committed to sitting with 15 families. Simple as that. Um, I'm full-time and I'll, I'll be the first to tell you, I don't sit with 15 families every single week. Um, I, sometimes I get lucky. I'm doing other things, that sort of thing. I write big, big pieces of business, but this week I wanted to change that. And I, I I'm bringing new people on and, and frankly, I just want to lead from the front and I want to do what I'm teaching people to do. Um, and that's a convicting, like you said, Chris, looking in the mirror, right? I am the opponent, not only myself, but also my team half the time. So, uh, what I did very simply was I decided no matter how many dials I needed to make, I was going to sit with 15 families. So here are my numbers. Feel free to write these down. This is what my work week looked like. You can't argue with math. Go for it. You can try. Uh, last week, I invested $630 in leads. Uh, 10 of those were A leads. I think six were call-ins and the rest were bonus leads. To this day, I still work bonus leads. Um, some of the biggest apps I wrote last week, I think four of that 13,000 was on bonus leads. So they work. Um, I made 206 dials 
I talked to 35 people and I've booked 18 appointments. That's 1.9 contacts for every appointment. So whatever percentage conversion ratio that is. Um, I sat with 15 by Friday. Uh, my last appointment was Friday at 730. And my wife was a little bit upset because we were going to go over to her parents' house. But um, this is going to lead me to my second point that I'll get to in a little bit. Uh, but I had an 83% show ratio. Pretty cool. Um, I wrote 11 policies. Uh, fun fact, too, I only worked Tuesday through Friday. So I did all that in four days. Now, in those four days, I was hauling. I worked 10 to 12 hours a day. Um, I'm not going to lie about that. Obviously, I took some breaks, but um, it wasn't just production. Like if you did the math, I think 206,000 is about four hours of work. I was a little bit slow because I was hosting dial teams. Um, some of my appointments took a little bit longer than an hour because uh, I was writing multiple apps. But I, I did work 10 to 12 hours a day and I did some building. You saw those contracts come through, some people registered for conference, that sort of thing. Um, so here's point two. You can have a great process, um, but the reality is, and this is going to come off kind of crass. Um, people don't care about your time. They don't. Um, you have to care more about your time and your schedule than other people do. And that's not selfish. Um, if I, and, and so here's the tip. Here's tip two. You need to say no. You need to say no. I had to say no to a lot of stuff last week so that I could say yes to what was important. I had to say no to taking certain people's calls. Um like I would get a call from an agent and it just, I, not that it wasn't important, but what I was doing was requiring my utmost attention. I was going to get back to them later. I had to say no. I had to say no to, to going and hanging out with people. Um, like on Friday, I told Maggie I was going to be done around five. My appointment went longer. I didn't finish till 730. So we showed up to her parents' house for dinner a little bit later. Um, was it worth it? Yeah, I had to. And, and the reality is if we had a regular job and we got caught up at work and something comes up, we just say, hey, we're working. I'm sorry. It ain't a big deal. And so you got to say no. Um, the, the third thing that I, I feel like was a big key to having a big week was how I handle white space in my calendar. So if you pull up your Google calendar and you're looking at just the blank stuff, like between three and five, you have nothing. I fill that crap up. I maximize it. Um, during uh, no shows, I got no shows last week. I got three. Um, I booked 18, right? I sat five. I had three no-shows. You know what I did in those no-shows? I did not go grab a beer, Chris. I didn't go make lunch. I didn't go take the dogs for a walk. I got on the phone and I booked more appointments. And that is hard to do. I get emotionally attached to my appointments. I book it. I'm excited for them to show up. I'm going to go help them. I already prepped the options. Then when they don't show up, I take that personally. And I'm sure everybody does. But how you respond to that situation a lot of times will determine the outcome of your week. I don't even know how many appointments I booked. Um, in those, in those no-shows, but they made me money. And so um, how you handle white space is huge. And here's, here's a fourth one that um, is really, really important is you need to, and this is during the appointment, okay? You need to focus on them. The appointment is not about you. They don't care about you. You need to not care about you during that appointment. The focus needs to be on them, their needs, and how to bring value. Last week, I wrote a policy for 26 bucks. I also wrote a policy for like 230. I treated and ran that appointment the exact same way for both of those. On one, I made 400. Uh, no, no, not even that, probably two. <laughs> 200 and on one, I made 2,000. You cannot treat people differently. In the appointment, I am not going in there trying to fit them into what I want them to pick. I'm very simply showing them the options and I make it very clear during the appointment, my goal is to do two things today, Chris. Find something that fits your family's need. Find something that fits your family's budget. If we can do that, I'm going to help you guys apply for it today. Does that sound good? Simple as that. And so those, those are the, the four things. And then um, you and I could talk about this too if you want. But one thing that I did last week is I focused on building at the same time. It kept me busy. It kept me accountable. And uh, some of the best producers in this business, if not all of them, uh, at least the ones that last are good builders. And if you want to get good at production, you, you got to start building at the same time. So that's, that's what I did. Um, that's good. I, I, I'm sure we got a couple minutes too. If, if folks got questions or maybe you and I can converse about this, if you got questions for me too, because um, last week ended really well, but there was some, there was some tough patches too, man, in that, in those four days. 
Well, you know, and here's the thing, and, and I want everybody to know this, something that numbers have taught me in this industry. Keep in mind, I've, I was in the field, yes, for 10 years. Um, what I do know and what I did, I, I studied this industry, mortgage protection, and I studied it to the nth degree. I studied other producers. I studied, you know, producers in California, I studied producers in Tennessee. I studied, so this worked all walks of life, and I started really understanding what the industry was teaching me from a number standpoint, and and a lot of people, they want to tend to ignore this, but it, it really is the essential part of the business that if you can put in the correct activity and process and do some constant correction, if you're brand new out there, it's a 100% chance you will succeed here. Yeah. Like it's not, you know, because a lot of people ask me, Elijah, you know, what's the percentage of chance of people... Um, that make it in your organization. Well, it's, I'm going to throw it out to you here, Elijah. Uh, it's 100% the people that don't do what we teach them to do. And it's 100% success rate of the people that do what we teach them to do. Yeah. And that's, that's the reality of our situation, right? Um, yeah. And one key thing, and I want everybody to, to really recognize something here. And it's something I work with a lot. Like if you want to know, when I meet my leaders, my key leaders, my agency owners, the key ingredient for all of them, because all of them, guess what, were at once producers and big producers, you know what I mean? And the key ingredient for all of them was this, that they built at the same time. And I started going to all these events all across the United States, Elijah, and I would watch producer panel after producer panel, people producing three, four, five hundred thousand dollars a year in premium. And the one common denominator, there was only one common denominator with all of them, that they also were some of the best recruiters in the industry. And that was awesome that I started finding that out because what they were doing is each week, they had a vision beyond personal production. And without vision, you know, we've all been taught, we shall perish. And yeah. with vision, we have a shot, right? And so what you going out and interviewing people does is give you a vision for the future, right? If you only produce, it's temporary. It's a temporary elixir. It can be solved for that moment and it'll help you produce now income. But what it will not do is create a long lasting future for you and your family and producing does that. Um, producing does the now income, recruiting does the future income. So just remember folks that at the same time with his white space, he put in building, right? Yep. And here's a key. If you want to get great at personal production, I challenge you to do this activity, 10 interviews plus a week. You'll be amazed at where your personal production goes. If you do 10 interviews plus a week. I agree. And you're saying, you're saying, well, Chris, I need to make money now. Okay, that's why I'm telling you to do interviews. Because if you do interviews, you'll become a better producer. Because interviewing people is the same as personal production. It's exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. It teaches you the principles. It, it gets you good at asking questions. It gets you great at solving problems. The definition of entrepreneur is problem solver. Mm. And so what Come you on. guys got to realize is once you do that one thing, it is free way for you to get better at the other one when you go in and, and do uh, presentations to help families. It's the exact same thing. The principles Absolutely. are exactly the same. I love what you said. You focus on the needs. Uh, hear what Elijah said. He said he focused on the needs of the people and he created value on that. It's the same thing when you do an interview. You focus yeah. on the needs of the person looking for a position and you focus on the value and how they would get that here at Symmetry Financial. And one thing I'll say to that too, Chris, is that it takes intentionality. Like, I don't want you guys thinking I just show up to an appointment and it just happens. Right. I am 100% in control of every single one of those conversations. And out of those 15 appointments I sat, there was probably three or four where I had to regain control of that conversation because they were talking about Lord knows what. And um, we would get to a point where I'm explaining mortgage protection and, and then they, they latch on to the idea that it's life insurance and that they don't want it anymore. And then we get to the bank account information. They're like, well, I need to talk to my spouse about it or, or whatever, or I book, a, I book a solid appointment. It turns out to be a one-legger. Um, you have to be intentional, whether it's an interview and you're talking to somebody who 
is maybe from another insurance company and they don't like the idea of starting at a certain contract rate or you're talking to somebody who hates the idea of being commission-based, you have to be intentional about finding what they need and, and, and showing how they can get it. Because at the end of the day, here's the deal, people. Symmetry is a vehicle, right? And you're, the destination and journey you're on is from where you are to really what you want, whether it's time and money, whether it's fulfillment, whatever. The system is the gas. You are in the driver's seat. I am not in your driver's seat if you're on my team. Chris is not in your driver's seat if you're direct to Chris. Um, and so what that means for you is you can drive this thing as fast as you freaking want to. Brian Howell is driving this thing fast. He's got nine people coming to conference. So is Brian Hamby. So is Jordan. Joe is flying, okay? <laughs> he He's like, y'all got a car? I want a plane. We're flying. <laughs> and so what that means for you is you can control your activity. For me, it takes me $206 to book my book my appointments and sit with 15. For you, if you're new, you may need to make 400. So you got to drive faster. And here's a couple like really obvious tips, whether you're building or producing, or hopefully you're doing both that you need to do. You need to stay organized, man. When you're working from home, if you're not used to working from home, if you're not writing all your stuff, I'm literally taking notes as we're talking. <laughs> it's just habitual. Um, I, I wrote down from, from uh, Jimmy Hogan, recognize your opponent, you know, like, like you need to keep yourself organized. I have a to-do list today of, of what I'm doing. I got a calendar. If you're not used to being self-employed and you're not organized, I mean, one, you're going to suck at this. It's not going to be fun. You're not going to make money. Um, the other is you need to wake up and instantly know what your day looks like. I woke up Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 6, 6.30, before my coffee hit my lips, I knew what I was doing that day. If you don't know what you're doing that day, I mean, what would you say, Chris, without vision, a man shall perish, right? Yep. You may not literally die if you don't know what your schedule is, but I can guarantee you're not going to make money, okay? If you're sleeping in until 10.30 on a Monday, you are not going to do well here. I'm sorry. Uh, let me stomp on your toes a little bit. So you need to be organized. You need to know what your day looks like. And two, you got to be willing to work despite emotion. Okay, that's where the process is greater than the result. If I showed up to my week just saying, hey, I want to write 13 grand. And then on Thursday, I get to Thursday and I haven't written even 10 yet. Um, I mean, there, there's an emotion that, that can be defeating. But when you just focus on the process, emotion, you don't need to care about emotion or how you're feeling. And that, that boils down to discipline. That's, that's just an obvious thing. If you are not a disciplined person or if you, you don't come into your week with habits of discipline, it is going to be incredibly difficult for you to have a big week. And so here, here's the last piece here. If you want to have a big week, you need to get clear on what you want and why you want it. That's personal Good. to you. You don't need to tell nobody, but it is going to get hard. And if you don't know what like why you're being disciplined or why you're getting back on the phone again to dial after being no showed or or why you're running another appointment or doing another interview or or talking to another agent if you don't know why you're doing that in a given week you're not going to do it emotion is going to be easier to cater towards than sacrifice in the process you know and so those are things that if you want to have a big week it's it's kind of that's the recipe and you know what we call that here right chris that's the system <laughs> that is the system and so I got more, I, I, a little birdie told me I might be helping with conference. And so if you want more, if you want to meet me in person or Chris or T Tina's going to be there, <laughs> get some Tina's tips in person. You need to be at conference. Um, the conference calls, somebody asked me a great question the other day. What, what am I going to get out of conference that I'm not going to get in training or on a conference call? You're only getting, uh, okay, picture this, all right? Here's the difference between going to conference in person and being on a call like this or, and going through quality of uh, quality and training. Um, by a quick show of hands, who has watched a black and white movie? I think everybody should. If you haven't, you should. <laughs> um, okay, if, if being on a conference call and, and being on the trainings and, and going through fast track, that's like watching a black and white movie without sound. OK, going to conference is like watching the same movie with color and sound. You get a whole different experience. It's the same movie. It's the same movie, 
but you get a completely different experience and message and understanding. That's what conference does. Okay. And if, if you want to go watch black and white movies, go for it. I mean, I'm bringing my popcorn to the movie and we're going to, to see the whole thing. And I mean, it's, it's up to you what you want to watch. The people who go to conference, statistically speaking, have way bigger teams, write way more business, make way more money, have a much easier time here. There's a reason they, they, there's the insurance industry has a 92% fail rate. It's because 92% of those people don't go to events. There's an 8% success rate after 12 months. Meaning if you are here for more than a year, you're in the top eight percentile. That's a big deal. There's a reason the average insurance agent only makes 32 grand a year. There are people doing that in a month, right, Chris? Mm -hmm. and, and all those people go to conference. And so if you're not registered, that's why you should go. Um, and if you don't, that's on you. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. I was sitting there taking notes on that. And, you know, and, and two, I think here's a good angle to take at it as well. It's like, you know, you think about you, Elijah, and I was thinking about you just having you on a guest this week. And it's like, man, you know, how long have you been here? How long have you been in Symmetry? Uh, the, the last weekend of this month will be three years officially. Three years. So for those of you brand new, you don't know. So Elijah, before you went to your first conference, how good were you at this? I was garbage. My biggest month was 2100 in premium. Wouldn't even have made it on the leaderboards. Wasn't even in the right. top. You were quitting. You were out of the industry. You just happened to go because someone thought enough of you to say, hey, I think you need to go and then decide if this is for you or not. Fair? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, and, and let's just stop on that for a second. It's like, because the way I look at it is, man, somebody thought enough of you to get you to go to conference. Right. And um, really, you know, I've seen your life change. You know what I mean? Just since I've known you, buddy. Like, and don't get me wrong. Like you were a winner. You've now found a good system, which you can go in and, and translate that to success. So kudos to you there. I think you would have won it wherever you ended up at. Uh, meaning if it wasn't even in the entrance industry, I think, you know, just knowing you, your personality, I think you're going to win at, at anything you do. I just think, man, what an awesome opportunity for a 24 year old to come here now own his own agency. And it all started with just somebody that you worked with, right? Sitting there telling you about what we do, right? Simple and as that. So had the fortitude to challenge you enough to get you to go to conference, right? So, you know, just translate real quick. Let's just say, take one minute on really, I think getting people to go to conference if you're in business with them is a form of caring about them. Yeah, here's why. If you come to conference, you are taking a big step towards investing in yourself. If you're not willing to invest in yourself, why should anybody else invest in you? You know yourself more than anybody. If you're worth that investment, if you're worth making X amount of income, if you're worth having a business and being a business owner, if, if you're worth having fulfillment in a job, you need to take that first step. Until you take that first step, we as leaders don't know if you're worth the investment yet. It's nothing against you. We want to invest in you. That's why we're telling everybody to come to conference. But the difference from a, from a practical standpoint of like, why we care about you is this business has changed my life. I'm 24. I'm married and, and we have an incredible life and we're incredibly privileged because of, of what this company has given us the ability to do. And, and one of the people's stories I absolutely love hearing is Joe's. Joe didn't know his own sister and brother until they started working with Symmetry. Like when I hear his, my hair starts raising, he didn't know his siblings. And to have a company that cares truly about time and money, that's where the name Symmetry came from. There are people all over the place whose lives would be drastically impacted if they were a part of this, this ecosystem and culture. If you don't go to conference, you are not going to stick around here long enough for Symmetry to get out of you what is in you. If you, if you do go though, you get a couple key things. One is training. You get belief in what we do here because it's not an easy journey. But if you believe in it, you will stick around long enough to get, get yours. You also get the association. That is the biggest difference. You get around people 
Chris, until I went to my first conference, I, I had never been in a room with so many millionaires. I went to my first one in DC. I was like, holy crap. I'm a little fish in a big pond, but good news is like we have access to it. And until you go to conference, you don't have that understanding. And you, we want you to go so that you will get out of this company what, what we have and that your life will change. And if you don't go to conference, statistically, you quit within six months. That's just, that's just the way it goes. Yeah. And so if you don't want to quit within six months and you, you don't want to waste the, the awful licensing course that we all had to go through, <laughs> if you want to make that worthwhile, then go. And we'll see you in Orlando in a month. I love it, man. And, and um, you know, what we know, what we do know, there's four cornerstones of success with Symmetry Financial. Number one is belief. And yep. all conferences is simply a transfer of belief from us to you. And so I challenge you to look at that and believe in yourself enough to go get a belief for yourself. So that's a good challenge. And for you builders out there, make sure you share that. And you go after that because there's a lot of people out there that need our help wherever they are in the United States that need our help because I was promise you a lot of people are struggling uh, just to find positivity in their life. And I promise you this company can help change their life if shared correctly. So appreciate you, Elijah, for setting the example. Uh, leaders, I've got you coming up here in just a minute. Thank you, everybody else. Have a great week. You guys have an awesome week. You guys just killed it. I think it was our second all-time best week ever. So just another awesome week by everybody. Good job, everybody. Thank you, Good guys. Stuff.